Okay, so if you're new around here, I wouldn't blame you for thinking that all I do is play my Switch constantly, all the time, never blinking, while I'm pooping. Yeah, and you wouldn't be wrong for thinking that. I do play my Switch a lot. However, it might surprise you to find out that I do play a little bit of everything. Although maybe it's not that surprising if you look behind me and see that I have video games for just about every system. But I didn't get popular on YouTube talking about the Mega Drive. I got popular talking about the Switch. So that's why, I, you know, focus on the most, mostly because I do love Nintendo and the Switch a lot, and whenever I make content that isn't about the Switch, well enough! I am sick of that, because there are so many fantastic games releasing on other systems other than Nintendos that I just really want to talk about. Oh, and don't worry, I know that a lot of you only watch me for this, so I'm also gonna throw in a couple of Nintendo games near the tail end of this video. Obviously the main one being Zelda. I want to give my thoughts on it. And it might not be the thoughts you want to hear, but it's the thoughts that I have. Audio is very important to me because one, I'm a video gamer and I want my games to sound And two, I am a video editor and I want my videos to also sound Lucky me and lucky you, today's video sponsor is Drop.com. If Drop.com sounds a little familiar, it's because they were formerly known as Mass Drop, but they changed recently. A little bit of a rebrand. They sent me this PC37X headset, which is a joint collaboration between them and Sennheiser. I've had this for about a month now, and oh my, I know I'm being paid to say this, but these are my own words I'm choosing to select. I love these freaking things. Before now, I had two other kinds of headsets and one just flipped me in the face, I guess because I portrayed them with this new battle one. <laughs> this one was my gaming headset and this one was my editing headset. Both of these now have gone bye-bye and this headset's taking over the role of both of those because of comfort and sound quality. The PC37X sounds so much better and these velvety cups are like heavenly cloud cushions against my ears. And now I can hear everything. Ugh, I don't want to hear that. Do you somehow still need more convincing? With a 5 star rating on drop.com and over 10,000 purchases so far and this part of the video you're listening to right now was actually recorded on this microphone. So if you're in the market to upgrade your headphones, I can personally recommend the PC37X. Of course, it really helps the show if you do click that link and thank you Drop.com for sponsoring this video. Also, what is in Japan right now and forgot to tell you a little thing which is if you click that link in the description, you'll get $30 off your purchase. So just click it. I need to kick this video off with one of the best games I have played this year. Gears of War 5, and I am not kidding you when I say I am one of the biggest Gears of War fans you will ever meet. Not only was I ranked in the top 1,000 players for Gears of War 2 online, you won't beat me. That's all I'm- I'm a little rusty now. <laughs> I'm loving Gears 5, the campaign and the online. How much am I loving Gears 5, you might be asking, well, I'll show you. Look, I got this thing. <laughs> it's the jack from the game. It's really freaking cool, and it works. Oh god, it's already getting very far away from me. Come back! Okay, auto land, auto land! Okay, it stopped. Well, that was cool. Great. Alright, I'm gonna go get my drone. It was literally the worst flight of a drone I've ever seen in my entire life. What do you, what do you think about that? It was, uh, it was pretty bad. Okay, so I flew it in my house and I hit the wall. Dude! Oh. I think maybe this blade wasn't spinning and that's why I couldn't bring it back. Also, good thing I wasn't standing that way of the drone. <laughs> Because <laughs> it would have come straight to my face. All right, attempt two. It's finished. I think the wind is just going down. And auto land. So in the game, it can rip doors open. <laughs> Apparently, it has to rip the door. I don't think it can open doors. Rip the door, Jack! <laughs> yeah, let's just <laughs> slam our collector's item into the door. He was supposed to open it. Here's our feet doing a little shimmy sham. All right, let's uh, let's go spy in. Let's spy on upstairs. Okay, I'm losing control. All right, that's where I film. Come home, Jack. You did good. Gears of War. Gears of War. Everyone backs away. <laughs> Rightfully so. Land, Jack. Land. No. He's fine. 
It's cool. Yeah, so I don't always get collector's editions of things, but I, there was no way I was missing out on getting my own Jack drone. All right, I don't know where to start. What are talking about the campaign about Gears of War 5? Holy crap, I think Gears of War 5 is by far the best looking game I have played maybe ever. Gameplay wise, it's Gears of War at its best. I honestly feel like they have built on every previous Gears of War game. I kind of like those souped up superhero abilities. Being able to go invisible and stealth around the battlefield, chain linking silent kills and wiping out entire waves of enemies without ever becoming visible was just about one of the coolest things I've done in a Gears of War game. Furthermore, the co-op implemented in Gears of War 5 was flawless and one of the best co-op experiences as I have had. As you guys may or may not know, I play a lot of my online co-op multiplayer games with one of my closest friends who I've been friends with since high school back in Australia, and we've tackled every Gears of War campaign together. So going into this one, we were very excited. Usually the Gears of War campaign allows up to four players, but they scaled it back to three. Essentially only two, but a third player could play as the drone if they wanted. But the co-op just between the two main players was fantastic. There was moments like when a helicopter went down and my friend fell out of it and he had to do this whole other mission thing trying to find me and I was pinned by the helicopter shooting and shooting at waves of jubies trying not to die while he was on the way to rescue me. You just don't see that level of co-op immersion in most games. That level of, I would say, effort. But by far the coolest part was playing as the main character or what I associate as the main character, Kate. She was dealing with a lot of issues because the horde infection was seeping into her brain and she she kept having these visions. And every time I, on my screen, were having these crazy whacked out visions, on my friend's screen, he just saw my character like having a massive migraine and had no idea what was going on. And I was having to explain to him what I was seeing and it was so intense. And as far as the story goes, it was their best attempt at telling a story within the Gears of War franchise. And where it left, it's just my mind was blown and I can't wait to see where it goes next. Not to mention, there's so many modes other than the main campaign. It's like obviously Horde, which I've never really been a fan of, but Escape, I am really enjoying. You get trapped in a hive with two other players, so there's three of you going against waves of enemies, starting with literally no ammo and having to find and scavenge for it as you go and escape the toxic fume explosion that you set off. It's really intense and I love it. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> All right, next we have a rattling experience. Jeez. <laughs> Oh wow, there's, okay, there's two discs in here. Plague Tale is a game that I knew nothing about, but I was perusing Reddit recently and I saw someone shared a gif of these rats in this video game. There was this character holding a torch and these rats were scared of the torch and they were moving away from it. There was something about how eerie it was, not only the context of what was happening, but the lighting coming off the torch, pushing these rats back and the rats AI scampering around the light as she was moving further and further in, taking care of this child. There was something about this imagery that made me want to discover what it was and how I could get involved And it turns out it was a Plague Tale Innocence So I ran to my nearest GameStop and I picked it up and I'm really glad I did A Plague Tale tells a story of just that, a Plague Tale It's set in like years after the Black Plague from what I can figure And the Black Plague is happening again, however in this universe the Black Plague is these toxic rats that build these nests and spurt these black veins everywhere and overcome the world and everyone gets eaten by rats. You don't so much get sick while there is some sick people. Mostly everyone's just getting eaten, eaten alive by rats. So not, not, a, not, a, not a world I want to live in. I don't like rats at the best of times. You play the role as a young girl taking care of an even younger brother. He is, as I said before, one of the sickies. He's down with the sickness. And you're not really sure what's wrong with him, but you know it's obviously linked to everything that's going on and it's your job to protect him as both your parents kind of it kind of gives me a little bit of Last of Us vibes in that sense, but it plays out very differently. The game is focused heavily, primarily only on stealth. And I do want to say, I usually hate stealth in video games, but this game is entirely stealth, and yet I still had a fantastic time. And that definitely speaks volumes about the game. The gameplay gives you so many options to be stealthy with and even eliminate your enemies with. So for example, the game starts off and teaches you the basics that you get in a lot of stealth games. You can throw rocks or pots to distract enemies and then sneak away from them. But then as the game goes on and you start to experience 
the rats. You can actually start to use these rats to your advantage as long as you're really careful. For example, in the game you get an item that can extinguish flames. So if you're trying to be all sneaky sneaking around and you see an enemy walking towards you near flames, you put those flames out, he's gonna get eaten alive by enemies. Of course you do have your trusty slingshot which you can just and then along the journey, you find a lot of characters that are willing to help you out. And then all of those characters can do certain actions which you can control. For example, Hugo, I believe his name was. You could have him go and assassinate certain enemies. The story was absolutely beautiful to watch unfold. The relationship between this brother and sister who barely knew each other, who barely even met each other before this. To the end point and the end boss, which was one of the weirdest and most epic boss fights I have had in a video game. I don't know if this game is going to receive the support it needs to get a sequel, but I I really want to see one. I can't find the games that I had. I was gonna talk about them. There they are. <laughs> I'm actually annoyed that it took me this long to talk about this game because it came out like a month ago and boy howdy, let me tell you, I've pumped some time into it. I think I'm up to like 40 hours or something like that. And before y'all say, oh looky, he's addicted. <laughs> no, I'm not addicted to it. So if you don't know, Friday the 13th is based on the movies where Jason Voorhees is killing a bunch of kids. You can either play as the kids or as Jason Voorhees. Every kid and every Jason has their own stats and attributes and abilities and can do different things. And then you all get thrown into this world. You don't know who Jason is gonna be. You can have up to eight players. Seven of you are just kids running from Jason and then Jason trying to kill you. The concept in itself, I love, but they actually implemented so many things that make this game fun. So here's what you have to do. You have to survive. Obviously, that goes without saying, and there's a few ways of doing that. The rounds last 15 minutes, so worst case scenario, you hide away for 15 minutes and you can win that way but let me tell you it probably won't work out especially in the last few minutes Jason gets all super powered and amped up and he can really hear and sense you and smash down doors so you have to work together there is in-game voice chat which is fantastic one of my favorite things about it is its proximity chat you scavenge around drawers trying to find utensils and utilities to help you and one of the things you can find is a walkie-talkie if you get that you can communicate with everyone else that has a walkie-talkie so when you're searching through these drawers you're looking for things like a fuse and if you find the fuse you can go to the fuse box fix it and call the police they'll rock up in five minutes and if you can get to them and that's a big if you'll be saved other ways to survive are there's usually a couple cars or maybe a boat lying around the map if you find batteries car keys gas you can fuel these things up and get on your way but starting a car or a boat is pretty loud jason can hear it and he's gonna be on you pretty quick so that makes the driving away frantic as all heck. Playing as Jason is an absolute thrill ride too. I love getting to be him. He can morph around the map, he can teleport, he can move super quickly, he can stealth. Here's the thing though, all of this sounds fantastic, am I right? But it's glitchy as all heck. It's an ugly looking game, especially on the Switch. All the characters look like they're made from wax models. I can't tell you the amount of times I've tried calling the cops and then gotten frozen in an animation where I can't move the rest of the game. Stuff like that happens way more than it should. And every time, it's more hilarious than frustrating. The only thing that I absolutely hate is that there's no lobby system for playing with your friends. You can't lobby up and search with a friend, so what it becomes is Sean will search, wait till he finds a game, and I'll try and join him. It won't work, I'll get booted, and then rinse and repeat until 20 minutes later we're finally in a game, and then maybe we get kicked from that game, and we have to do it all over again. So the game just kinda is what it is. You're either gonna enjoy it or you're not. I love it. Oh shoot. Literally, I was about to review this entire game. I don't know if you heard that. I just walked into this mask and then I was like, oh yeah, I should really wear this mask for the video. And then I remembered, I have that. <laughs> okay, I, I have a kind of a little history with Borderlands 3 apparently. So it turns out Gearbox, the people that made this game, they're local. They actually have their studio like 40 minutes from me and they invited me out to come and play the game early, way back in May. Actually, here's some footage of that. I went with my friend Dreamcast guy and we played the game for like two hours. It was super nice of them and they said, go home, Wooderson, upload your footage tonight. You could be one of the first people to have Borderlands footage on YouTube. I got home. I looked at my footage and I went, I have a Switch channel. <laughs> what, what am I going to do with this? But it was a fantastic experience being there, let me tell you. They are super nice people. They even had boxes of Borderlands games for Xbox and PlayStation on the front desk. And they were like, ah, oh, just take it. You want a mask? Just take it. I got this mask from Gearbox headquarters. This was actually from my local GameStop. I think it's a really cool standee and they didn't want it. 
so I took it. So of course, as I said, I'm playing through this game with my friend Michael back home in Australia, and we are loving it. We had just played through the first and second game in preparation for this game because I'd never played them before. They improved on the franchise so much, and they made literally everything better. Like, so many quality of life improvements. For starters, you can slide around the map like the floor is made from banana peels, and that is oh so enjoyable. There is so many freaking guns. There is a stupid amount of guns. In fact, I, pr I'm sh I probably have footage of it, but when I was there at Gearbox, when I had finished my playthrough, I was like, yeah, I'm done. I finished the boss battle you set me up with. Whatever. I think I'm good. He came over and he hit like that, like a button or something on the keyboard a bunch of times and guns were just spawning like hundreds of guns. And then I started to realize the scope of the guns in this game. The stats for each of the guns are also random on top of the randomness of the guns and what they can do. So when you mix and match all of it together, I asked them, so how many different guns are there in this game? And they said, well, if you count all of that as different guns, millions. Millions is what they said. They fixed a lot of the issues I had with the skill trees and abilities. It felt like in Borderlands 2, for example, it took forever to get a skill ability and level yourself up. Borderlands 3, it felt like I was leveling myself up after every mission, which was very rewarding. The sense of humor is on point. I really enjoyed the humor in the first two games. I didn't realize how hilariously memeable they are, but they really amped it up in the third one. It has a ton more mission variety than previous Borderlands games, and everything about it is just snippy, snappy, snappy. Be. Everything just keeps moving at a fantastic pace and it's just fun at its core in every element. It plays great, it looks amazing, they did a fantastic job and I mean, they're kind of like local devs to me. So I feel proud, almost like they're homegrown, even though I've only been here a couple years. If I shout loud enough right now, they could probably hear me. You did a great job! Alright, it's the moment you've all been waiting for and I know that because <laughs> literally the only reason I threw this game into this review was to get you to actually watch the entire video and see my opinions on everything else crafty maybe smart possibly clickbait I have no mixed opinions. I have what I feel like might be mixed statements, and uh, it's gonna make sense when you let me get through it. The first statement I have is this is an absolutely perfect remake that couldn't have been done any better in my opinion for what it is. Oh, the other statement that sounds a little mixed is this is still one of my least favorite Zeldas. <laughs> and a lot of you might get upset by hearing that, but let me, let me just give me this. Zelda Link's Awakening tells the story of Link washing up on the shore of an island he's never been to before. It has a giant egg sat up top of a big mountain. He literally is completely clueless as to where he is or what's going on, or if any of this is even real. You meet a cast of brand new faces and characters. Zelda is nowhere to be seen, yet another Zelda game that Zelda isn't in. I don't have an issue with that. And it's your job to awaken the wind fish which has apparently got something to do with an egg, so that you can save or destroy this island. It's pretty unclear, but it's the only thing Link has to go on, so that's what he's gonna go and do. The game plays as a 2D top-down style Zelda, kind of. It's 3D as well, with certain parts kind of not being quite top-down, but it is. The game plays perfect. It's, it's fantastic. It's 2D Zelda at its absolute prime. The only issue I have with this game, it's a very tiny, teeny, teeny tiny issue, is its pacing just feels very slow. I found myself grinding for rupees so that I could afford the bow, which was a necessary instrument to one of the dungeons. It took me a long time to get the 980 rupees I needed, and I didn't know, I forgot, that you could find an ocarina and, and you could learn how to warp, and I literally didn't learn that skill until I got like right near the end of the game, so a lot of my game was having to walk around the map in places I'd already been a thousand times, killing the same things a million times, going to the same areas a million times, and the game as a whole was very linear and you had to do things in a very specific order. So structurally, it just felt like I was really forced into doing a certain thing at a certain time and it didn't have that freedom that a lot of newer Zeldas have. And that's fine. I mean, it's a remake of a Game Boy game. It was the first ever handheld Zelda game. It's not going to be perfect, but when you actually consider it was the first handheld Zelda game way back on Game Boy. Holy crap, didn't they just do a fantastic job? And the way they built the game visually, the graphics are so cute and they're just so good. And the only reason why I started this by saying it's one of my least favorite Zeldas was because of the competition, man. When you actually start stacking up every Zelda and going down the list, I can't put this above a lot of the main core titles that have released. Hey, guess what guys, you did it. 
pal, give yourself a round of applause, a pat on the back. You made it through an entire one of my videos that wasn't just about the Switch. If you like this video and, and you would like to hear me talk about games other than Switch sometimes, show the love, show the support, smash that like button and subscribe. Wait, wait, no, I gotta do it right. Here, flip on that subscribe button and share the video around so that it does well. A big thank you to today's sponsor. I'm probably in Japan right now, so... Konnichiwa. <laughs>